So today I'd like to show you one of uh, my favorite techniques for adding shadows and highlights in Adobe Illustrator. So over here in Illustrator we have a, uh, uh, a tool that I've uh, developed over the years uh, for adding um, shadows and, and highlights. So what I want to show you is how to actually create this. So what I do is I'll start out by selecting and the ellipse tool and creating an ellipse and right now we're going to create a black shadow brush and what I start off with is a an ellipse that's solid black and then I'll go ahead and I'll create another ellipse that's smaller and also solid black now we're going to create this one here where the intensity is directly right in the center of this brush that we're going to do but by all means you can create the, the effect to be more uh, localized at either leading edge of, of our brush so you can start to play around with where that position is but we're just going to go place that right in the middle here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the outer edge the outer ring and we're going to drop down the opacity so under transparency we're going to just slide that down to zero because we want our edge of the brush to be a fade effect then we're going to go over here under our blend tool I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to come in a little bit closer here so you can see and we're going to click on this anchor point and then we're going to click on this anchor point and it's going to make a blend from the black transparent ring to the solid dark ring in the center if you double click on your blend tool it will open up this window and you can control the number of steps that you want to happen from this corner to that corner so right now there's 25 steps inside of there we can change this to 50 and this will double so you'll see your gradient become even smoother and you can here click preview and you can notice that now, I just want to warn you the higher this number is and the more of these brushes that you use within your artboard or your artwork it will start to get very heavy and intense from a memory standpoint in your file so just remember however many you put in here may look good like good here but it's really gonna start bogging down and slowing down your system so I tend to just go to my default of, of 25 steps so we'll hit OK and there is our our brush now you can also change you know the size here so why do I have this or why did I create this well I want to be able to um, let's say I have a a curve that I've created so I created this line and I want to have a shadow effect using this point that starts here and this point will end here along this path so wherever the starting and end point is this will follow and flow along that path now what I tend to do is if I know my artworks this size I can try to get this to the correct scale that I like so let's do this where we'll take our image now that we've created and under brushes we're gonna make a new brush so what I usually do is I'll take this I drag it in here you can see the plus sign activates and once that does once you release it'll open this new brush uh, dialog box so I'll go and I'll click pattern brush and hit OK so this will occur along the entire path of that line and it just got placed right here now when I click this line and I want that to activate just make sure your your uh, stroke is active this will occur right along that path so now I have a, a faded shadow line now you can control this by playing with the stroke weight so we can drop this to 0.5 but look what happened because this is a pattern brush this is creating a rep repetitive and you can see right here it's creating a repetition along that path so if I drop this to 0.25 you can kind of see so this would be a great technique if you wanted to do something like stitching or having these dashes occur they will be connected 
Um, if you double click on this, you have some control here over the scale, uh, the spacing. So if you want to space this by 50%, um, we'll apply this to the stroke. So you can see that it's, it's placing a gap in between, right? Well, you know what? That's not the effect that I want. I want to have that as that original continuation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our original again. Let's drag it over. Now we're going to create an art brush instead of a pattern brush. Let's create an art brush. Now it, open up, up, it opens up a slightly different dialog box. So you can see the start and end point here. It'll stretch to fit the stroke length. So let's make sure that that's on and we will hit OK. So now you can see this is the image here in our brushes window that was just created. So if we go and we apply, let's if you hit B, let's turn the fill off. So I have my stroke back and let's apply this. There we go. So it's the same right now but watch when I change the stroke weight to 0.5. So now it didn't break that into half. It's kept it from the beginning point to the end of, the, of that line in that curve. And if I activate it and I drop this down to 0.25, I can scale that down even further. So this is the same principle applies to a white shape. So you create the two ellipses, you do the outer one with zero transparency and do the exact same thing. So since we already have this, let me show you how to move this. So using my um, your selection tool here, your direct selection tool, we will click on this shape here and let's slide that over to the left. Now what I want to happen is I want this side of my stro of my line, my curve, to have the highlight over here. And, and this area here will have a longer taper to the right. So I'm going to duplicate this line so you can see. And before we do that, let's create a background shape just so we can see what's actually going on here. And I'm just going to change this to a, to a blue color here. I'm going to move that to the back. So we have this shape here. You can play around with, with those shapes. You can change the size of the centerpiece as well. We're going to go ahead and drag that over into our brush window. We're going to create an art brush. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to make sure stretch to fit stroke length is on. Hit OK. So now it's right in here. It's hard to see because it's white on white, uh, but it is in this little area here. And you can rename the brush to whatever you want. Um, so now we have this. Now let's apply the white effect. So there we go. It's kept it at 0.25 point line weight, and it's applied the highlight over here to this side. And it has a longer tail that kind of fades off. Now what's cool is another thing I wanted to show you is if you do the um, if you have a black shadow line let's get in close another trick is right now it's using the black and going to uh, transparent black but you can see it starts to get a little brown what I usually like to do is I like to go under transparency and for all my black brushes that have this effect, I like to change it to multiply. So now you can see, let me undo that, but check out how this is nice and black and see how this has this brown, this brown tone. So there we go, see? I'm just going to flip back and forth so you can see this. It goes from brown, kind of reddish tones to just solid black. And what's great is it doesn't matter whatever color you have below, it'll just multiply and uh, take on that that effect. But you know, if you want to create like a little crease or a, a cut line uh, or a part line that has a shadow and a highlight, um, this is a really cool technique to be able to give you that control. 
Um, so the other thing you can change these, you know, black and white are your defaults, but those could by all means be other be other colors. But I find these ones work the best. So I hope you like this um, how to draw uh, tutorial and uh, check out some more more of the tutorials that we have. Thanks.